Yikes. Looks like you've just used every single junior developer's excuse. It works on my computer. Obviously, you don't want this to happen, so let me introduce you to Docker. Let's say you're in a dev team. One of you uses a hardcore Windows machine, the other one of you uses a MacBook, and the other one uses your average Arch Linux setup. Obviously, every one of your guys' computers are different. It's like they speak a different language. Docker is like a universal translator, and it wraps your app in a little thing called a container that works on every single person's computer. Think of it as like a shipping container for code that will run everywhere. In short, it will prevent, but it works on my machine. Now, why is Docker so good? Portability, your app will run everywhere, even in space if there was a computer there. Consistency, you don't need any weird dependency issues because they're all built into the same Docker image that you'll be building later. And the last, efficiency, you can share resources and save your own RAM and it'll even make you sound a bit smarter at tech meetups. Now, let's go straight into installing Docker. Step one, you're gonna to go to docker.com. Now, for you and your Mac friend, you're just gonna go ahead and press download Docker desktop. But for the ones who of course are using Arch, by the way, you'll have to add Docker's repository into your pacman config. Once you've done that, you can just run pacman s docker. Now, this might look a bit confusing at first, but Docker is fully managed from the command line meaning you just run commands and it all works. Some basic commands are docker pull, which will pull an image from the docker hub. Think of docker hub as like GitHub for Docker. It stores everyone's images. But what exactly is an image? Think of an image as actual code. So people will upload their code into an image and post it on docker hub or keep it private, of course. Once an image is published to docker hub publicly, you can just pull it from the command line and run it instantly. Take nginx for example. All you need to do is run docker pull nginx. And then right here, you run docker run, which obviously runs an image, dash d for detached, which means it won't output the std out into your terminal, dash p 8080 colon 80 space nginx. When you run this, boom, you've got a web server running in a container. Congratulations. So I open up my browser, localhost 8080, boom, welcome to Nginx. But many of you are gonna be thinking, how do I make my own image? This is where Docker files come in. Think of a Docker file as a list of instructions on how to assemble your image. I'll be showing you how to set these up now. Let's take this React app. It listens on port 3000, but obviously it's not ready for production. So how are we gonna run it? First, make a Docker file. You do this by right-clicking on your IDE, press new file, type in docker file and hit enter. I'm sure all of you know how to make a file, right? So the first line in a docker file is going to be the from line. And the from means the base image you'll be basing it off of. Now the docker hub has lots of these, such as Ubuntu, Arch, and even node for itself. So what I'm going to go do here now is type from node. We're missing another thing the tag. Now think of the tag as like a specific version of the image. So I want to be using node 20. So I just put colon 20. Boom, it's already using node. Now you're going to want to set up your work directory. You do this by typing work dir forward slash your directory. So for all of my apps, I just commonly use slash app. And now I'm going to do copy package asterisk dot json forward slash app. This will copy package.json and package-lock.json into the slash app directory inside of the container. Now let's talk about the run command. The run command will actually run a command, funnily enough, inside of the container. So because the node image already comes with npm, I'm just gonna go ahead and write npm install. That will install all of the node packages that we need. Now I'm just gonna type copy dot dot. This means it will copy everything from the base directory of your project into the work dir, which is slash app. And now you're just gonna run expose 3000, and then cmd, an open array, npm, run, start, close the array. Now we're gonna talk about Docker build. This actually just builds your image using the Docker file you just created. Go ahead and open up a terminal and type docker build now, unfortunately, I wish it were that easy. You have to add a few options at the end of the command. 
such as the tag name and the directory of what you actually want to build. So what I'll do here is docker build dash t for tag name my dash react dash app space dot which means the directory I'm currently in and look it's already building the app. Once that's been created we can now actually run it from the command line. Pull up a terminal and write docker run dash d dash p 3000 colon 3000 space my dash react dash app and you'll see we get a little id after that. You can actually view the logs in docker desktop or from the command line if you want that. Now if I go ahead and open the browser and type localhost 3000, you can see the React app is being served. Now there are ways you can optimize containers because as you can see, this one is pretty huge. That's where Alpine images come in. Alpine is a Linux distro that is really lightweight on storage and RAM, which means you can efficiently build Docker images without having to worry about taking up all the storage on your host PC. To do this on most packages, they might already have one by just adding dash alpine to the end of the tag name, but you'll have to check the Docker Hub for that. For me, I always use node colon 20 dash alpine, and you can see that has changed the storage a little bit. Now, this was my first video, so I hope you did enjoy it, and I might make more in the future, but for now, go and test out Docker, have a good time, have a great day. Bye.